Okay. Understanding. So this is one thing that I like to say a lot. I like to say that understanding, and this ties into with forgiveness also. Again, a lot of times we don't know why the Holy Spirit is saying to talk about these things in this kind of order and things like that. Yeah. Uh, we just gump it. Definitely an act of faith. Yeah. <laughs> so, understanding. Understanding, for me, understanding is really, really important because when I understand something, I can't get mad at it like I used to. You know? Like, when I understand that, for example, you know, like, what taught me a lot of patience was actually dealing dealing with children. Yes. I know, right? I know. Crazy, right? So, um... If you, if you have never, you know, dealt with children in a real capacity, you know, daycare, babysitting, your own children. Mm -hmm. Parenting, yes. Yeah, parenting, stuff like that, right? If you've never dealt with children, you just say dumb things like, oh, they're just so sweet and innocent. (laughs) I... (laughs) (laughs) Those kids know exactly what they're doing. Yes. Exactly what they're doing. And they will try to push your buttons on purpose. Because they are seeing that it bothers you. So children know these things. They do. I I never will forget. I was at daycare. And this first grader, just one day, I mean, he looked... This goofy looking kid, right? He had like the bowl cut and like the big old glasses, you know what I'm saying? This is in like 2009. I don't know what I don't know what was going on. But anyway, please, that's beside the point. Please stop trolling. I'm, I'm just, trolling I'm just the saying. Babies. I'm just saying. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dear God. With the bowl cut. Go ahead. Little bowl kid boy with the, with, the, with the goldfish in his eye. Anyway, so this kid, <laughs> so this kid one day, I mean, he was pretty harmless, you know? But one day, he went completely insane. I mean,. He was just running around, uh, wasn't caring about what we were telling him to do, because he wasn't in my group. He was in someone else's group. And just being, just running on a rampage, you know, and he started cutting holes in the other kid's pants, you know, just completely lost his mind. He actually, I tried to sit him down, you know what I'm saying, just kind of hold on to him, and he was fighting me and growling like some kind of cackle demon from... From Hades, you know, nah, and I was like, what is going on with this child? Accidentally headbutted me, almost threw the kid, but I didn't do that. Thank God. But I wanted to. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> so, so, you know, I was like, what is going on with you? And he told me this, first grade, he told me, while he doing this little shaking thing like this, right, shaking around, he was like, well... All I have to do is say that I'm sorry to my mom, and she forgives me, and I can do whatever I want. And I was like, huh, he gets it that early, how to take advantage of the situation. So, (laughs) so, so again, I was like, wow, how do I even deal with that? Because, I mean, these kids, I remember one time, this this one kid lobbied, lobbied hate in a tactful way. This is sec- my second grader, one of my second graders. She goes up to the popular kid, named name Chase. She's like, Chase? She had beef with this other girl named Miranda. So she was like, Chase, I'll give you my lunch money if you go around on the playground and start saying that you don't like Miranda. That's lobbying. That's politics. Wow. This is politics. She bribed him to spread to the right person, hey, (laughs) if he's saying that Miranda is garbage or whatever, you know what I'm saying, then the other kids will more than likely follow suit and just assume that Miranda's garbage. Wow. Second grade. Second grade. And I was like, somewhere there's something that Paul, there's, there's a preacher named Paul Watcher. He told me this. I don't need to tell me this personally. Uh, but he said this. He said that, and I always had a problem with this too. He goes, because of original sin, 
he was saying that your children are born in iniquity and in sin. And if you leave a child alone or baby alone and don't teach them anything about goodness or grace or whatever it is, you will have a monster on your hand. He said that if a baby was was reaching out for a watch on your arm and that baby had a grown man's strength, that baby would snatch, would kill you, snatch that watch right off your wrist and not think a thing about it. Now, I had a problem with that. Then I started coming around the kids. <laughs> and you were like, wow, the wisdom of Paul Washington. And I was like, <laughs> I don't think he's wrong anymore. Yeah. Now, again, we love our children, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. I love those kids. I really, really did. You know? But my understanding of that situation with children was just kind of like, okay, I get it now. But at the same time, too... My understanding was that they were still children. They didn't have a concept of themselves and the impact they were having on what they were doing. That's the part that they didn't understand. They understood how to manipulate, how to be vicious with each other, how to... All that stuff. They understood all that stuff. But they didn't understand the impact of that because, again, their child is all about them. They don't have any concept of what other people are do, going through or whatever. They have no concept of that at all. Yeah. So, even though I was seeing horrible behavior sometimes from, from some children and some very advanced, what I thought was very advanced manipulation and things like that from second and first graders, at the same time, I wasn't mad at them because my understanding was that they think that they know, but they have no idea. Yeah. And... The irony, and the crazy thing is, is that some of us are still dealing with things that mean kids did to us back when we were in elementary school. You know? Yeah. So, what I think about understanding, like, I can't get mad at those kids, because they're little kids, they, they don't know any better. Sometimes I can't even get mad at adults, because of the exact same reason. They have no conception of who they are, so therefore, they act like self-centered children. Yeah. Yeah. So two mm. things for me, right? So this is where I got my first notion when we were talking about, um, right, the first part, which is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. This is why I said that you have to recognize that your emotions are compromised. Yeah. Right. Because if you believe that my emotions are innocent and, and all people are good, and so only good things spring out of me, then when these feelings rise up, it won't occur to you that you need to discipline them. Mm, yeah. But so the, the right step number one is the recognition that my emotions have a virus. They are compromised. Now, in Christianity, we call that that virus sin. Right. You may call it something else, whether, you know, depending on your faith background or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. But I think that's the first level of understanding. Second thing is this. I was listening to radio program yesterday. Um, a guy named Dr. James Dobson. Mm -hmm. He um, started a huge organization now called Focus on the Family that he's no longer a part of. But he was harkening back to, I think he said 38 years ago when he first got on the radio, he started talking about the homeschool movement. He said he was one of the people who really pushed that in America and made it the movement that it is today. He said that when he was a grad student, there was another guy who was a PhD who had just graduated three months earlier who was doing research and discovered that like most civilizations have done, one of the values of homeschooling is this, that parents have the responsibility, especially when their kids are young, of protecting their children from other children. Mm. And I was like, wow. <laughs> Right. Because I think the idea, certainly the approach that I have taken and I had to repent from this, the, the approach that I took was, well, they'll learn. This is good for them. This is part of the process. But some of that abuse is not a part of the process. Bringing it back to the topic we're talking about because their abusers don't understand. Yeah. And I remember Paul Washer was saying this, too. He was like saying that exactly what you were thinking is that, you know, this is part of the process of growing up. You know, they're going to have to deal with these problems, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. And then he was like, but his response to that was that, why would you have them get used to something like that? Right. 
What's normal about that? Right. What is normal? Because what what, <laughs> what they normalize becomes then what's okay. Right. So if I normalize emotional abuse, if I normalize bullying, if I normalize manipulation, then that means that it's okay for them to marry a husband who emotionally abuses them, bullies them, or manipulates them. Yeah. No, sir. Right. So he he's absolutely right. But I think this. Right. So this concept of understanding really speaks to our character. Right. This is really the definition of character, emotional understanding. Mm. Right. I think that many of us are emotional children. We feel things and we run with it. Yeah. But we have no emotional understanding, which I think is the definition of maturity. Yeah. And so if you lack understanding, then you never move from right, being the um, victimizer to being the healer from being the victimizer to being the resolver, from making things worse to making things better. Yeah, yeah. And this is where, you know, we're kind of talking about some tough stuff here, you know. So we're not saying that, you know, if you're not homeschooling your kids, it means you're a terrible parent or whatever it is. Right, kind of a different conversation, although I'm a big fan, but yes. You're, <laughs> but, you're, but you're correct. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and I don't homeschool, so, you know, I'm a, band, I'm a fan, but, you know, that's kind of a different conversation. Go ahead. Right, right. Um, but... Yeah, it, it it's it's it is the settling in. If you hear anything about a noise outside or just a thunderstorm, yeah. But anyway, it's the understanding that that of how things work. Yes, it's the science of it. Yes. So when you understand the science of something, you're not afraid of it anymore. Yes. Right. So that was one of the benefits of that was one of the benefits of the Enlightenment was the fact that in terms of Western culture and everything was understanding that stuff and stuff. Right. Um, now it's arguable that you know in the Middle East you know in terms of college being instituted there and other places like that you know what I'm saying we're talking just talking about the Western Enlightenment right now but anyway understanding grew because people got tired of being terrified of what they felt was superstition and a lot of it was you know yeah. so when they had understanding of it people could move forward yes and that's huge. Yes. That's huge. Now, the Enlightenment go too far in some other places? Sure. That's what people do. Sure, right. You know? Welcome but, to it. Yeah. But in terms of the concept of it, of understanding something, being able to digest it and know what it is, causes the person to be able to master it rather than be mastered by it. I agree. So that's agree. the benefit of, of, of understanding something. And so, yeah. for me personally, when I... When I understand why someone does something, yep. I have taken that thing that I would have been afraid of, mastered it, and then put it in its proper place. Yeah. So then after that, I'm not freaking out about it anymore. I'm not harboring unforgiveness anymore. I'm not saying, how could so-and-so do that? You know, I was like, well, maybe I could do it under those circumstances. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So um, in, in the same way, too, it's like, just because I don't understand why someone did something doesn't mean that because I don't understand it because I wasn't in their background right you know that's correct and and the crazy thing is too is that you know it goes back to the protection of the children and things like that you know in terms of understanding and talking about that a little bit but that's the protection that we need to look at sometimes too is understanding the fact that some kids are abused and they're therefore mimic their abuse from home and then they pass that along like a virus to other children so it's the understanding not to be mad at the child. To be, it's a, it's more the understanding to be praying for the healing of the parents who are obviously jacked up. Yeah. You know? Now that right there is a chain of command that you can really follow. Yes. Rather than be mad at, you know, so-and-so and this, that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to be doing all that. You just need to be directing the prayers towards something. Yes. And you can do that when you begin to understand that, hey, stuff is messed up. That's a, probably a generational curse. And that little kid doesn't have a chance except for you to introduce God into the mix in prayer and in, so that that can happen. But the only way that can happen is because it's, it's from forgiveness. Because you've experienced that first through God's love. Forgiving that person because you understand 
and then moving forward with your prayers and with your love and with whatever it is that you can do to help that family who's in obvious desperate need yeah. because it's not normal because kids do weird things man when when they're abused and they show all the signs of it but they don't know how to articulate a doggone thing yeah you know like there was heartbreaking stuff you know where if a child is sexually abused for example they will actually take their feces and wipe it all over the walls and things like that so my father-in-law actually works with you know these kids that are completely and totally just whatever you know but that's one of the characteristics that they actually do is stuff like that now if you didn't understand that you would say that kid's a freak don't allow him in my class anymore get him out of the school etc etc but once you have understanding of why they do that it's like oh my god this poor victim changes everything yeah just that quick of understanding so yeah it breaks my heart too <laughs> yeah but I think this leads us to the next thing though yeah which is not just understanding but understanding the right things yeah, yeah. right having taking ownership of the, of the proper territory yeah so let's go ahead and jump right into that which is going to be as you already said territory <laughs> 